Recently, the United States and China's Taiwan region seem getting even closer in terms of their economic ties. Their talks on the so-called U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade started two weeks ago, and the first round of negotiations will probably take place this month. Both sides have publicly described this roadmap with words like ambitious, high standard, and meaningful. But is it really that good for both parties? What does it mean to the 23 million people on the island? This is BP, the insight you need. I'm Wang Tianyu. Well, after I read three pages of the negotiating mandate covering 11 trade areas, I barely see any substance from this proposed framework. The name itself is telling. It is an initiative instead of a free trade agreement. The two most critical issues, market access and tariffs, have not been mentioned, which means the economic effect of this initiative is relatively weak. In fact, this trade deal between the United States and the island of Taiwan has significant overlaps in content with the Biden administration's Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, or IPEF. The IPEF is an economic partnership launched by the United States with 13 Asia-Pacific countries in May. Unfortunately, the Taiwan region was not invited to join the talks, as Washington and the 13 members were concerned the move might further anger Beijing. So a week later, the United States announced it would launch these so-called trade talks with the Taiwan region, which I see this as a way to comfort the island. Both the initiative and IPEF are designed by the Washington to counter the Chinese mainland's growing influence. The political antagonism behind this move is way bigger than actual mutual economic benefits. And Taiwan is the most important chess piece. Considering the U.S. dominance on global trade and its American first principle, the initiative will definitely help the world's largest economy reap benefits from the island. This conclusion is not groundless. Clues can be found in Taiwan's key economic pillar, the semiconductor industry. In April, Morris Chang, the founder and former CEO of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, known as TSMC, said the company was urged by the U.S. government to set up factories in Arizona, but it did not make economic sense. The reasoning behind this is not hard to understand, since the Biden administration views semiconductors as one of the vulnerabilities of the U.S. supply chain and has stepped up efforts to build self-reliance on chips. So Taiwan's economic output from its crucial semiconductor industry may be gradually moved to the other side of the world. In contrast, Taiwan's top trading partner, the mainland, has been the island's largest export destination for almost 20 years. Last year, Taiwan's trade surplus with the mainland reached over $133 billion, which is bigger than the total value of the goods it traded with the U.S. And under the Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement signed between the Taiwan region and the Chinese mainland in 2010, trade has more than doubled in the past decade. China has repeatedly stressed that the Taiwan issue is the country's domestic affair. Therefore, meddling with the cross-strait relations stepping on China's red line. So if the Taiwan authorities continues to be obsessed with these enticing and good-looking trade deals with the U.S., it will only give up the economic benefits of its own people. 